If you're looking for your first or next flip phone, the Oppo Find N2 Flip is here. It may not have the name that rolls right off your tongue, but it does have a better design, larger cover screen, and cheaper price point. As usual, let's talk about the design. The N2 Flip adopts a clamshell folding design, much like most flip foldables, at just 7.45mm thin and 191g light, so you can fold it and have it in your pocket without feeling much of that bulk, especially for the guys. For the ladies, I'm sure most of you will carry them in your purse instead, so nothing to worry about there. The N2 Flip comes in astro black and moonlit purple. Personally, I do prefer the black variant more as it has a matte surface compared to the glossy one on the purple. While the black version does fit the male demographic more, I chose to go with the purple one instead. You know, for the sake of this video. Despite the purple variant having a glossy surface, fingerprints are very much unnoticeable due to the lighter colour. However, if you tend to have sweaty palms, like me, you will have to frequently give it a good wipe with a microfiber cloth. When folded, the N2 Flip seems to have a similar hinge and folding mechanism as the Z Flip 4. Although the Z Flip can hold its orientation at almost any angle, the N2 Flip will close and open itself once you fold it past roughly a 45 or 110 degree angle. On the bright side, this makes opening with one hand so much easier as the phone will help snap itself open. While close, the N2 Flip has no gaps, unlike the Z Flip 4, making it seem slightly thinner in comparison. All differences aside, you will find similar button placements with the volume rocker and combined fingerprint and lock button on the top right side of the phone, which is natural considering the phone's ergonomics. The crease on the display is slightly less noticeable than on the Z Flip 4, but we'll see how that fares in the long run. And speaking of displays, the N2 Flip sports a 6.8 inch 21 by 9 AMOLED panel with a refresh rate of up to 120Hz, just your typical AMOLED screen with decent vibrancy and brightness. Where it gets interesting though, is the towering 3.26 inch cover screen. Well, towering by cover screen standards at least. It's a 17 by 9 panel in portrait orientation which will likely be more preferable to people expecting to set their own custom images or photos as wallpapers. Oppo has also included a bunch of live pet wallpapers which you can interact with and you will change what it's doing based on the phone's status and notifications. The cover screen also supports always-on display and its own set of widgets for various functions. But unfortunately, at the time of this review, the widget selection is extremely limited at just 6. Hopefully, it increases down the line. Both the primary and cover screen supports face unlock and that's about it for the display. Overall, I definitely appreciate the larger screen real estate, especially on the cover screen although it may take some time for the widget library to grow. On the audio front, nothing is going to blow you away. It's kitted with a pair of dual speakers which sounds average at best and muddy at worst. It does support Dolby Atmos for specific contents but even that only does little to improve the speaker's performance. Regardless, average speakers aren't going to be that much of a deal breaker for most of you anyways, so slap a pair of earbuds on and call it a day. Now on to Color OS. As much as I'm fond of Color OS and all the customizability that it brings, I do feel like I encountered more Oppo service prompts on the i2 Flip as compared to the Reno 8 or Find X5 Pro, from app services to even having a separate app store alongside the Play Store, which could be confusing for some users as it's even able to update non-Oppo apps as well. It's pretty weird. Color OS also now includes hot apps recommendations in your home screen. Pretty annoying if you like to customize your home screen. Thankfully, it can be turned off relatively easily in the settings. Nitpicks aside, Color OS does have its own set of nifty functions like a shelf for widgets and quick settings for gaming. The N2 Flip houses a MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus. While it underperforms in CPU benchmarks against the 8 Plus Gen 1, it fares much better on the GPU's side. Nevertheless, I rarely experience starters and throttling in general usage or gaming. The only time I've experienced weird hiccups is during occasional unlock when the display will flash uncontrollably and won't go away until I turn the phone off. Unfortunately, I've also yet to discover the cause for this issue, so hopefully, it's only happening to my unit alone, or it will get fixed with a patch down the line. While gaming, the phone will get noticeably warm on the top half, which is nothing out of the ordinary given that the entire SoC and the components are packed there due to the folding design of the phone. Speaking of the top half, the bottom half of the phone houses its beefy 4300mAh batteries, which is leaps and bounds ahead of other flip phones. 
And it shows, with the phone lasting well beyond the 9 hour working day with general usage, YouTube and a little bit of Diablo Immortals. Now, we understand that battery life is difficult to quantify with many variables and use cases, thus we are starting an interesting new experiment known as the 10 hour YouTube test. We play a 10 hour long video on YouTube with 50% brightness, location and Bluetooth off and see how each phone fares. For starters, the N2 Flip did last through the video with 37% left on its battery. It isn't much to go on at the moment, but we'll try this experiment with more phones down the line, so stay tuned. Links are included in the description as well, so you can try it out with your phone if you have 10 hours to spare that is. Oppo has also included a 44W Superbook charger and a USB A to C cable for juicing up your phone when it's low, which isn't something to be taken for granted today. It can charge up your N2 Flip to full within an hour. Sadly, it doesn't support wireless charging, which is understandable given the compromise for the larger battery. The N2 Flip sports a dual camera setup with a 50MP main and an 8MP ultra wide, along with a 32MP front camera. For selfie lovers, you may use the front cover to preview your main camera, reducing the front camera's use case to basically just video calls and face unlocking. There's also a dual screen preview feature which allows you to preview the camera feed on both the main and cover display. So for those of you with friends who are more particular about their photos, hopefully this helps speed things up. Image processing is handled by the all familiar Mari Silicon X with a strong vibrancy and contrast. Portrait mode is a little rough around the edges but generally the camera performs okay in different situations. The ultra-wide camera will lack the finer details and the front camera looks considerably softer compared to the main. So the point I'm trying to make here is to use the main camera as much as possible. The phone also shoots up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Video fidelity is average here and if you are of a slightly older demographic, you can shoot the video like a camcorder, reliving the good old days. The Oppo Find N2 Flip is priced at $1,299 and is only available in its 8GB plus 256GB storage configuration in Singapore. The cheaper price point does make it the more appealing option compared to the Z Flip 4. And although there are a few kinks to iron out with this phone, there's definitely more to like about this phone than otherwise. And that's about it for my take on the Oppo Find N2 Flip. If you like what you see here, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to us on our social media and YouTube channel. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!